Boom! What's going on, everyone? I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk. Today, we're going to continue our multi part series on what it takes to make a die cast model vehicle. Now, in my first video about this series, we talked about going from the raw metal to the cast parts, getting them painted and pad printed. And then, in our second video, what we talked about is making the plastic injected parts and the chrome plated parts so that you can see that. Now to catch up, what you need to do is go back to my channel, Logan Skeel, and look at those two videos just to get all caught up. Also, while you're there, why don't you take time to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified of all of my videos. Now, down in the links in the description below, I've got a free resource on resin versus diecast. Now this will tell you what resin is, why resin is taking over the market, and why you should have resin in your collection. Today though, what we're going to talk about is wheels and tires. Those are the parts that really set off our model and whether they're a $5 model or a $1 model. These, make, these tires and wheels make a big difference in the styles that are made. But today what we're going to talk about is the two different styles. So we'll get to that as soon as we get through the intro. Now the big question is this. Do you want a unique toy collection that is the envy of all your friends and fellow collectors worldwide? If so, you have come to the right place to learn about all things die-cast and resin. Follow along as I talk about the latest and greatest releases from the top manufacturers in the industry that will make your collection stand out from all the rest. My name is Logan. 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk. Now today, wheels, tires. What good would a die-cast model car or truck be without those? <laughs> kind of silly, right? But you know, I actually got one straight from a manufacturer that way. It looked really silly in the package. No rear tires. But anyway, what we have today is wheels and tires. And we're going to go into how they're made. But first, what we need to do is review all the machines that we've talked about before. We started with multiple computers, a 3D printer, a 3D scanner, and we use that 3D printer as a rapid prototype. Then we go on and we make the uh, CNC milling machines to mill out the molds. We need an electric furnace to melt the metal. We need, then we need the high pressure injection machine that handles the metal and makes our die cast parts. Then next we need a a plastic injection molding machine and we need a vacuum chamber to plate some of those plastic parts also we need a spray booth and an airbrush to paint our parts and a pad printer to put on the dampo details <laughs> takes a lot to make a model and we're not done yet today we're going to go back to the plastic injection molding machine to make our wheels and tires now all our wheels and tires they also need a mold carved we have to have, if there's 18 wheels, we need 18 mold cavities carved to make all those wheels. We'll also need 18 mold cavities carved to make all our tires. It takes lots of molds and lots of parts. That's two more molds that are needed to make the model. And remember, every part that's on the model has to have its own mold cavity made in order to make the part. Which means, 100 parts, we need 100 mold cavities. Oftentimes, we'll have to have more than one mold made for each part simply because of the number of parts won't fit in the size that the machines can handle on the molds. Now, let's begin our discussion today. Wheels and tires and how they are made. Now, for the model world, there's two different types of wheels and tires. There's the first type, which is used on inexpensive, highly mass-produced models, particularly Hot Wheels and their 97-cent cards. These are where they inject the plastic wheel and the tire together as one piece. This saves time and money because it's all one piece, one assembly. Don't have to put the tire onto the wheel later. Now our slightly more expensive models, they've gone to using a tire, separate tire and wheel. And, but this takes an extra step in assembling the two together so it adds a little more cost down the road to every model. But anyway, back to the mass produced ones. This is the first type of wheel over here. You can see where the plastic wheel and the tire are made together. You can see it in the back right there where you can see that back is kind of hollowed out. That shows that that's all one piece. 
Now, it's great because this is very fast process. They can inject as many wheels and tires as they can put on the mold cavity, throw them out, and then they can send them over to a pad printer where they pad print on exactly the wheel pattern that they want to show and then send them straight to assembly to put on the machine. Very quick, very fast, very efficient. But doesn't make as great a model. Now, it's still amazing that Hot Wheels can make an entire car for a buck. But these methods where they eliminate parts, eliminate every step in the assembly line, that's how they can do it. However, for models like you and I like with our, our trucks, what we want is a little more realism. So what we go down the route of the plastic wheel and a rubber tire mounted on it. Over here, this is an example of the wheel and tire as separate parts. You can see how the tire is hollowed out and then the wheel is pushed into it. This allows the tire to be actually made out of rubber simulating a real tire and the plastic wheel simulates a good steel wheel or chrome wheel on a real vehicle. Now this method here is great. It makes an almost realistic wheel and tire combination for our models. That's why our better die cast use this. It costs a little more but it makes a better model. To make those plastic wheels, what we'll do is we'll carve into a mold with a CNC milling machine the number of wheels that we need for each model. So say our model has four wheels. That means we're going to take our CNC milling machine and mill out four wheels into the steel mold to send to the plastic inject machine. That way we make all the wheels in one shot. Similarly, what we're going to do with the tires is the, uh, the same thing. We're going to mill out four tire cavities in the mold and then send them off to another machine where they inject a rubber-like material and then once that's cured they pop them out. Now, once the parts are done, the plastic wheels will either A, they'll go to a paint booth where they'll be painted if we want painted wheels, or they'll go to a vacuum chamber where they'll use the vacuum metallizing process to chrome or gold plate those wheels depending on what we want to do. Most of your wheels are chrome plated and this is great because that chrome I'll, will simulate a real polished aluminum wheel or an exact copy of an actual chrome real chrome wheel that would be put on a real vehicle. It makes a very realistic looking finish on the wheels. But for those wheels that are painted, the painting also simulates the real ones very well and it'll give you a great finish. And once those wheels are done, then they're sent over to a part where the tires will be assembled onto them. But before we can do that, our tires have to be made. We've got them popped out of the mold from before, and what we do is we'll send those tires either A, to the assembly point, B, they might go into storage, or C, they will go over to a pad printer. Depends on what they need. If no other work is done, they'll either go to storage or to the assembly line, because oftentimes the lettering and all that detail is molded right in, and black letters work great. But if we want white letter tires, we'll send them over to a pad printer, and we'll pad print on the, the label such as Firestone or Goodyear. Um, this has been done several times on semi trucks and others. It makes a nice little finish. Once the pa tampo pad print is done, what they will do is then send that tire straight over to either A, storage, or B, assembly. In this case, most likely to go over to the final assembly lines. But anyway, now that we have our wheels and our tires, huh, we got to put them together. The wheel has to be mounted on the rim. This takes either a person to mount those wheels or it takes a machine to aid that person. Either way, this adds another step in the process which makes this process a little more expensive because there's more labor involved, not to mention we're using two different materials of, to make both the tire and the wheel. All this adds a little more cost to the model, but it's well worth it because we end up with a much finer looking model at the end and a more realistic model and I I don't think any of you would disagree that the rubber tire on the plastic rim looks better than the all plastic wheel and tire I know it was the standard back in the day and still done today but it's increasingly being discontinued in favor of the wheel the tire mounted on the wheel just because it makes a much better model now I do remember Ertl did this back in their trucks of the world series I got one of their trucks of the world's Actually, I've got several of their Trucks of the World Series trucks, and they all have a plastic tire 
and wheel molded together. What they did was they chrome plated the wheel to make it look like it was cool, but the, it was all one piece. Not too long after that series came out though, they switched all their trucks over to the rubber tire on plastic wheel, just to make them a little bit better, and it worked so much better. Now, a quick note about the vacuum metalizing process. If you didn't catch my last video, go back and catch it, because that's where I talked extensively about it. But what this process is, in a vacuum chamber, metal bars are heated to a vapor that, and once this, they're vaporized, they are adhered directly to lacquered parts in the model. That makes a great chrome finish. See, and here is an example of our chrome wheels and black painted wheels. They really stand out, don't they, versus the, old, the other style where it's plastic and all plastic wheels. Now, just think about, we were making a run of a thousand pieces of a standard semi truck and trailer. That's an 18 wheeler. That means we'd have to cast out 18,000 rubber tires, 18,000 wheels, 5,000 axles, and then assemble all of this. Can you see why this method is a little more time consuming, a little more expensive, and why the inexpensive Hot Wheels go with the uh, cast the wheel and tire together? just saves time and time is money but we go this route with our trucks simply because it makes them look a whole lot better at the end of the day and it's worth it for our customers now here's a side note for you hobbyists out there if you happen to have a model with a broken or lost wheel or tire you can make one yourself now it's not that hard what you need to do is make a mold of the, an existing wheel that you've already got and then cast it out of resin and then you can paint it there's e for those of you who need a chrome wheel, there's even chrome paints out there which will do very well to pretty much match what you've already got. And if you're missing a tire, you can do it a similar way. You can make a silicone mold and pour a urethane rubber into it, let that cure, and replace that missing tire. Will these be good enough to replace the originals exact? No, they won't. But they'll be good enough to save that cherished model and put it back on yourself so you can really enjoy it again. Now let's recap what we've gone over today and all the machines that have been needed just to make our wheels and tires. We needed a CNC milling machine, a plastic injection milling machine, a rubber injection machine. We needed some molds. That's just a few things. And we might even have needed a tampo machine plus a vacuum plating machine. <laughs> now are you getting the idea that it takes a lot of machines and a lot of people to make these things, not to mention lots of molds. And all of these things cost lots of money. Uh, the average mold is several thousand to several hundred thousand dollars just to make the set of molds to make a model. That's the molds. Then the machines, tens of thousands to millions of dollars just for the machines to make these things. That's why there's such a huge pricing difference. Some things that we're making a, th a million pieces of, we can sell for a dollar, i.e. Hot Wheels, with streamlined manufacturing processes. Or... We want high detail models that we're going to make, say, a thousand pieces of. Then the price goes way up because of the cost of the machines, the molds. All this has to be amortized plus the cost of actual manufacturing, which we haven't even got to yet. So stay tuned. That's coming up in a future video. But my next video that will be out next week is going to be on the clear windows and other clear parts that go in to finish off our model that make it really sparkle. So stay tuned, and don't forget to grab in the links in the description below my free report on resin versus diecast. It will let you know exactly what resin is and why resin is taking over the diecast market and why you really need it in your collection. It will really set your collection apart. And as always, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, ring that bell to get notified of all of my videos. And if you know somebody who'd enjoy this, please go on and share it with them. I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk. See you next week where we talk about the clear parts and glass. Talk to you then. Bye.